Hi, this is Naha Belli from the American University in Cairo, and today I'm doing a meta session with Michael Weinraub. Michael, can you introduce yourself? Sure, sure. It's a pleasure to be talking with you. So yeah, Michael Weinraub. Uh, I live in the, the D.C. area in the U.S., in Rockville, Maryland, uh, and uh, I've done a lot of stuff in education, and I'm now having a great experience uh, as a, consult as a uh, consultant to USAID uh, with a, a really neat consulting company called Bixel, uh, and I'm doing a ton of facilitating. And so, of course, Maha and I connected uh, on the Twitter, uh, and, and so glad that we're just thought partners and action partners in this work. So, uh, so fun to be here. And so what I what I wanted to do is I wanted to meet Michael because he did this uh, thing of 33 liberating structures in 33 ish days. <laughs> um, and, and then, you know, I wanted to know more about his journey. And I thought, you know, one of the liberating structures is called nine Ys. So I'm going to ask him why not necessarily nine times, maybe within 10 minutes, see how many Ys we get through uh, for that. So, um, so, you know, one of the I'm going to I think I'm going to share my screen just to show, um, you know, something about the nine whys as an invitation. Um, and then we're going to put the link to all that in the, in the additional resources anyway. Um, and, do you want to say and, something and, before I go? Yeah. Yeah. This will be super cool because um, I mean, even though I've quote gone through the 33 structures, I am still so new and learning so much. And believe it or not, I've never actually participated in the nine Y. So this is going to be very uh, spontaneous and authentic. I just participated in it like yesterday or the day before Wednesday. Yeah. yeah. Two days ago. Yeah. With a, uh, a group of people. There's a lot of free uh, liberating structures practice sessions. So the other day I, I joined the Texas group for the first time yeah. um, and I tried the nine Ys for the first time and I loved it so much. And it was actually about the liberating structures as well. So it was a meta session like this one. So I was like, I could do that with Michael. You, you've attended one of the free sessions you said with Anna and Fisher. Yeah, sure. Well, not surprisingly, you were the one who uh, who uh, who tweeted about it. And I was like, yes, I am so ready for that. Uh, and it was great. Uh, I mean, just big shout out to uh, to Anna and Fisher. Uh, I mean, such uh, uh, such warmth and ability um, and just just really excited me about doing it some more. Great. So um, so the way the, the nine wise is supposed to work. Uh, is that I would ask you, what do you do when working on, and maybe I could say facilitation, and I mean, that could be the question, like, how do you facilitate sessions, and then why is it important to you to use the liberating structures, which is one of the things that I know you're using. So I'll just right. skip that first step of what do you do when working on, because I already know now that you're, you were, you want to find that, there was a tweet that started out this whole liberating structures thing, so I'm going to stop sharing so that you can share that as just the starting point, I think, and then yeah. I'll start asking you why. Okay, so you share. So shall I share now? Yeah, you can share now. Okay. So that sort of answers that first question of what you were looking for when you found the liberating structures, and I'm gonna keep asking you why, why, why. Right, right. So let me even, so it really, it's, it's this tweet on top that um, in my role at, at USAID, uh, I work in the Bureau of Resilience and Food Security. Um, and in my center, um, uh, they just uh, uh, quickly identified that they had a need. It was a, there was a, a reorganization. Uh, so there were a lot of these visioning meetings and work planning meetings. And so I just started uh, designing and facilitating retreats, both for small groups and larger groups. And then, um, as I often do when I've got this real uh, work-based need, uh, I share it on social media with my, with my PLN. And so this was really the one, Maha, that kind of got it all started. May 13th, I put it out there, tagged a few folks, and then, of course, into the breach comes Sherry. And she's like, well, yeah, I've done some work on this. And guess who else has? Uh, you know, and then she mentioned the meetups. And then um, shortly after, uh, and there was probably some more interaction. But then, let's see, this is probably it. You're like, hey, for anyone who's interested, you know, uh, you know, there's a there's a session, and this is what brought me to to Fisher and and, and Anna's session, and and I've really been a devote a devotee ever since. Why? Why did you become a devotee of liberating structures? Uh, I see what you did there, <laughs> and I, and I like it. Um, 
it just really, um, I mean, for a ton of reasons, but to try and keep it short and sweet on the, um, uh, to start, um, I um, find the principles absolutely inspiring um, and human-centered um, and effective. Uh, I think that having some structure to make meetings, my God, especially in, in, in the world in which we're living right now with so much um, flash virtual working, just having structures uh, for more participation in meetings and less simply presenting, um, such a need for it. So I was immediately very, very interest, interested in having some structure to make meetings more participatory. Did Why? Why? Um, I, well, first for engagement, um, you know, like a lot of people, um, I was all of a sudden just in a ton of meetings every day. And most of those meetings were present, share, present, share, present, share. Um, and what, what, what I really appreciated about, um, I actually got the book. Um, you know, so, so like you, I use the, uh, I use the website a lot, but then I got the book. And what I really appreciate is just digging down deeper to acknowledge that, you know, simply opening up the floor for discussion does not mean that it's particip participatory and does not mean that you're hearing all, all voices. Um, so primarily I wanted to uh, maximize engagement and, and just make sure that all voices were heard. Why is it important for all voices to be heard? Um, you know, um, interesting, this is almost a meta piece, like engagement is important for engagement. <laughs> um, and just, you know, people just check out, um, you know, if, and I think it goes both ways, you know, if you're in five, six, seven, eight different virtual meetings over the course of the day, and they all pretty much follow the same well-intentioned um, agenda of, hey, here's a topic, let's have open discussion. Um, and, and I don't want to mock it. It's just that I think that so many people are lacking the structures and the supports and the scaffolds to really facilitate these, um, these discussions. So I think that hearing all voices increases engagement. And of course, that's not, that it's not even to mention just making sure that, uh, that you really get great ideas um, out mm. on the table. Right. So what, what you mean is, including all the voices in, increases the engagement of each of the voices because they're all, each of them is engaged, right? That's um, right. And, and in both a receptive way, like when you're hearing more voices, you're likely to be more engaged as well mm -hmm. as a, um, a direct subjective way. If I am, an, if I am encouraged to participate um, um, more, then I myself as a participant will likely be more engaged because I'm actually talking and, and, and sharing more. Yeah. So there's, uh, I was going to ask a question slightly different. So it is a why question, but it's coming out as a what. And is it, what is it about the liberating structures that makes them do that? And they're not all the same, obviously. So you could give me examples of particular ones that you like, that you think do a good job of that. Right. Um... Well, they are, they are so varied. It's fascinating. I mean, I, uh, it actually turns out that I've only used a few of them over the last couple of months, uh, notably uh, one, two, four, all a lot, um, you know, as a very, very basic one. And then Troika Consulting and Wise Crowds that we've talked about. And so the, the, they're, they're really quite varied, you know, on on the one, two, four, all front, it's just, it's such a simple but powerful structure just to give people well, the, the protocol and the structure to make sure that everyone gets a chance to, to talk and contribute ideas. But then Troika Consulting is so cool um, in, a, in a different way because it, uh, you know, there's this release of responsibility. Uh, that's really the thing that I love about it. I love to be like the client. I love to just say, okay, everybody, here's my problem, solve it for me. <laughs> um, and then to be, and, and also the flip side too, like when I get to be the consultant, this is somebody else's problem. So I'm happy to solve somebody else's problem. Just don't make me like generate answers for my own problem. Okay. So I just, I, I, I just feel that the, the, the structures put people, um, 
uh, in, in different situations that I think are illuminating and, uh, and in most cases authentic and in, in every case um, self-generated and really like based on what it is that, 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 that they're ready to share at that moment. And, and you said you've tried some of them. Like you've tried some of these, like the Troika and the one to four all. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think of a why question because I know I'm actually just curious about how people re reacted and how you felt doing it the first time. So these are yeah. not why questions, but I just want to know. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, well, I've, uh, I mean, what's funny, I've been more of a cheerleader for liberating structures than I have been an actual facilitator. I mean, I've, I've facilitated one, two, four, all a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Troika Consulting um, a few times. Um, and then uh, the appreciative interview, which we may, you know, want to segue into. Um, I actually used that one in a, you know, medium sized group of, uh, of uh, the staff of about 35 people. We did this mm -hmm. virtually. And so we had folks uh, uh, pair out. Actually, I think we, we may have done a version of appreciative interviews in groups of four, in breakout rooms of, uh, in groups of four. Um, but in our particular situation where there, there is a, a recent reorganization, so a lot of folks coming together for the first time, uh, I thought that it was really neat to kind of uh, um, start from a place of success, which is to say, uh, envision and uh, and talk about um, something from your professional work, which uh, which was a success, which can be built on. Mm -hmm. um, and then it also is just very, um, uh, I think it helped to build community. Um, I mean, as you can imagine, at USAID, there are folks who've been at missions, who've had various posts around mm -hmm. the world. And then all of a sudden, when you mention this post you were in in Uganda, someone's like, oh, you were in Uganda? I know this person. So the, the appreciative interview is just a very interesting community building structure because mm -hmm. it, it, it often just surfaces and evokes connections that folks have. Awesome. Can I think, I, I can't think of another why, to be honest, and I think we've been doing this for quite some time. Is there anything else you want to add just to the experience and then we'll stop recording this and work on the appreciative interview in a separate uh, recording? Yeah, well, you know what, what I would say is, I mean, I, I think that I'll, I mean, part of the reason that, that you and I um, are talking now is that, you know, I went from just random guy who was interested in liberating structures to actually beginning this project, 33 structures in 33 days. Um, and let me see if I have that tweet. Um, and I'll just see if it's here. There we go. So this goes back to July 1st that I said, okay, everybody, I'm going to dive in. And, you know, for those who are on Twitter, you already know, but for those who aren't, like, like a lot of people, I use Twitter just to be a part of the conversation. Um, and uh, I just can't say enough about what it's meant over the last couple of months to be, to be doing this independently, but to be inviting other people to join. Um, and, and Yuma have been amazing and Sherry and other people um, who I did know, but I've deepened a connection with and people that I didn't know, but now have a connection with. And it's all here and it just kind of like continues to circle and cycle um, uh, again and again. So I, I it, it was so wonderful for me to do this kind of publicly on Twitter. And just like for me as a, as a learner, I like to have a project. Um, and, you know, that's why like I'm often even if I'm if I'm engaged in something. Um, occasionally I will document that or, you know, as Remy might say, like I annotate it, like I'm, I'll, I, I'm, I'm trying to like, like uh, 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 document what's going on. And, uh, and I've certainly done that with uh, liberating structures. And it just gave me a structure and kind of something which is goal oriented that there's 33 structures, I'm going to go through them. And of course, I've only just like touched the surface, but um, touching the surface on all of the structures has given me like just a, a broad understanding and I'm really excited to learn more. Right, exactly. And I think the, the advantage of what you've done there and you've done it in a short time, we were talking about also reading religious texts within a certain amount of time. What it does right. is that it gives you a good global view of everything that's there so that you can actually, even if you don't know everything in detail, it's like, oh, these three structures are kind of similar and you were starting to say that because you were learning them all in a very short time, you're like, oh, these two are very similar and they have this slight difference and 
these tend to be in that way. And you know what I mean? This is the kind of thing where you learn them over a larger period of time, you might miss those connections. And I, I loved when you were making those connections and asking those questions. So yeah. I love both what you did and I love the public uh, dimension of it, uh, which I think is, is helpful to others. Like asking questions like the one you asked is helpful to others. Uh, sharing your learning is helpful to others, you know? Yeah, like we had, a, um, I don't know if I have it immediately, but uh, um, you know, we had this great interaction, you, me, and, and just a bunch of people on, hmm, well, what is the difference between uh, Troika and wise crowds? And like, is it, a, is it a difference just in quantity or quality? How are they really different? And just this, I mean, it was so, it was so such a rich discussion among well, we practitioners. We should talk about this one. That was a good one. Yeah. Because uh, we've actually recorded Troika, which is when three people do it, but wise crowds is not necessarily three. And then I was talking about how I did it in my class fishbowl style, because I was worried students wouldn't be able to do it on their own. And then it turns out this is a liberating structure and development, which is called wise fish, I think. <laughs> that was that was a really cool like discovery that you th I thought I invented something, but it turns out that someone thought of it before. <laughs> <laughs> which is which is often the case. Wise fish sounds almost like a joke. I'm so excited that that, that that is that that's actually a structure in in development. I've actually speaking of that. Um, just a final point before we close out this recording is that I found in groups that are. Um, that you don't know how open they are or how quick they will be to catch on to liberating structures or where you have very little time or you're worried that you don't have breakout rooms or people are going to be uncomfortable with that. I found that doing a fishbowl of the structure before I send them out into breakout rooms or instead of sending them out into breakout rooms tends to work really well because a lot of times people don't get the instructions. Uh, wow. And like if people are non-native speakers, for example, of the language that I'm giving the workshop on, like when I've given it in Arabic to Arabic speakers, they understood it and it wasn't a problem. Uh, but like for too much diversity in the audience where I don't know they're going to manage or I don't have enough co-facilitators to go between rooms to make sure everyone's okay, the fishbowl of any liberating structure yeah. tends to be helpful. And then if you find them drifting off because they misunderstood the structure, you have time to to show people, oh, don't make that, you know, be careful not to overdo this or da da da, da because sometimes people think they, it, it's difficult to stay within the structure and within the time limit. Right. When you're you, not used to it and you don't know the power of sticking to time. Yeah, <laughs> you, you know what's so interesting about that, and I'm surprised that I, I haven't realized it before, you know, the, the, the fishbowl is such a great structure for, you know, uh, for guided group practice, you know, as as I think of the the, the seven step lesson plan, which is so familiar to uh, many, um, you know, K twelve teachers, you know, after uh, like traditional direct instruction, there's before independent practice, there's usually guided group practice, and it really is effectively the fishbowl. Like you want everyone to look at it so that you build understanding before they go out and do it independently, and. Uh, I just never made the connection that that really is what fishbowl, or that's one use of the, the fishbowl structure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think fishbowl is a structure outside the liberating structures, but I think the way they do it with the liberating structures is the emphasis on um, um, my understanding, because when I did, I actually practiced it once with a group uh, of liberating structures people. And they were saying the main difference with the way the brain structures does it is that it emphasizes that the people in the middle talk to each other, not at the audience, because mm. it could turn into a panel, like if you're doing right. it with, you know, with academics or whatever, but it's about them talking to each other, telling each other stories and asking each other questions rather than speaking at an audience. And, and that's, uh, that's an interesting this distinction right. there, which, which makes, I think, the quality of the conversation different. Like if you sit people together to talk to each other, it's very different than them not looking at each other and looking at the audience. Well, well, of course, you know what, what other connection I'm going to make right now is back to Troika that, and, and we, we all tweeted about this. It was so it's rich. About that. Yeah. The, when you actually, when you actually turn around or you actually mute, um, this was something, was it Nancy or even someone else who said, Oh yeah, not only do I turn off my video, I turn myself around. Yeah, um, because and, you're not just looking at them, even though they can't see that you're looking at them, I'm sure it affects how you're responding to it. Yeah, totally. that was amazing.
I think That's it was great. Nancy and I think Autumn was talking about how the affordance of camera off versus what everyone else is talking about, which is they yes. want the camera on. Yeah, the, yeah. the uh, and, and even just more globally, the affordances of a virtual meeting and, uh, yeah. uh, and, and of online learning more, more broadly, of course, as you know, um, um, you know, in this era, a lot of folks are understandably focused on um, what they can't do. Uh, mm. But there are so many affordances, and it's really neat to keep those yes. in mind, too. Yes. Thank you. That's a good note to close this video on. Thank you, Michael. My